So just coming up on a quarter to three, and you may have heard that religious education uh, will no longer feature as part of the state's core curriculum at primary school under new proposals which are being proposed by the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment. You would think this would be music to the ears of Atheist Ireland, who have long campaigned for such a move. But Michael Nugent, chairperson of the organisation, not jumping for joy. Michael, how are you today? Uh, Well, not too good in terms of that particular move. I think there are certainly people within the NCCA that are trying to bring about an objective and critical and pluralistic education system that teaches about religions and beliefs rather than indoctrinating people, evangelising. But the difficulty is they can't enforce how that's implemented. And the the schools, 90% of them uh, are Catholic schools. They're state funded but run by the Catholic Church. The reason the Catholic Church is involved in that is to evangelise. And because they're the only school in most areas, they're also evangelising children of atheists, children of Protestants, children of uh, Islam and various minority faiths. So the difficulty with this is that they will still be able to uh, devote as much time as, as they want to religion and they will do so because they want to. Um, I was just trying to get my head around what exactly the situation is at the moment. Um, at, at the moment, the, there's kind of rough guidelines, but religion must be part of that, is it? Well, at the moment, the uh, primary school curriculum m- makes religion obligatory. Okay. And uh, in, in, in fact, you ha- it has to teach morality by bringing children to a knowledge of God. So, so the, the, that's the, what the state curriculum does at the moment. So if they want to bring in this current thing about moving religion out from being a core subject, they'll have to change the state curriculum and remove that from it. But the school Schools are still able, under the patron's time, to uh, put in place whatever they want in terms of of religious education. That's the the formal religious instruction classes. Now, there's an added difficulty as well, which is that on top of that, they integrate their religious ethos throughout the rest of the curriculum. So in art class, you know, you're drawing pictures of Jesus being crucified. In music, you're learning hymns. In, in English, they even have English spelling and grammar that has, has sentences that you have to learn like, uh, you know, Jesus is our saviour uh, and we should believe what we read in the Bible. This is an English class. So so whatever they do with the formal religious instruction class, they need to change the, the Education Act to stop the schools from implementing religion throughout the whole curriculum. That sounds like it's another day's work, is it almost? Because what they're saying in this is that, um, and these are the biggest changes, some of the biggest uh, proposed changes to teaching and learning in decades. And what they're saying is that 60% of the school day be set aside for core curriculum, English, Irish and maths. 40% then is designed to be flexible time during which they can teach all discretionary things and, and whatever they want. And that's where you probably see the problem. That because it's it's most of these schools are uh, patroned by Roman Catholic organisations, that's where it's going to come in. It's going to make no difference at all. Exactly, Be- because they're not doing religion because they're being forced to. They're doing religion because they want to evangelise. Now, who it will help is it will help educate together schools because educate together schools will no longer have to pretend that they're bringing children to a, a knowledge of God as, as part of the religious curriculum. So they'll be able to be more honest about what they're trying to do. But but it won't help uh, not not only the the uh, people who. Are, have to attend Catholic schools but in fact it it will almost strengthen the, the Catholic ethos by removing the state influence from it. So what, what would you like to see? Is that achievable, what you want it to is, see? It is. It's perfectly achievable. What you need to do is recognise that our education system is unique in the world. It breaches the human rights of not only atheists, but we, we're involved in an alliance with the Evangelical Alliance of Ireland and the Amadeus Muslim Community of Ireland, who are also discriminated against because Church of Ireland schools discriminate against the Evangelicals and the two Islamic schools discriminate against Amadeus because they're, they're Sunni schools. So, so what is happening is we have a system where the state cedes control of the education system to religious bodies who then not only evangelise children of their own faith but evangelise other people who have to go to those schools. What we need to do is the state has to say the state curriculum must be delivered in an objective, critical and pluralistic manner. And there are numerous human rights recommendations to Ireland saying that unless you do that, you're breaching the human rights of of minority faiths and and atheists. And to, to do that, what they need to do is just change the Education Act to prevent the schools from implementing the state curriculum through a religious ethos. And how difficult is that to do? 
Well, it's a stroke of a pen, literally, but it requires political well, will. Will is the, is the defining thing there, though. It's not really, because, because if you think about it, the schools can't function without state funding. Yeah. Now, the state is claiming that it has a constitutional obligation. To, this is bizarre, not a constitutional right even, but a constitutional obligation to buttress religious discrimination in order to protect religious freedom. And they're saying that that's what they're doing in the schools. But actually, they're undermining religious freedom because they're undermining the religious freedom of everybody who isn't a Catholic. Mm. And so, so what the state needs to do, if it's, if it's going to genuinely respect the religious freedom of everybody, is have schools in the same way as any public service. You don't go to your local police station and say, I'm reporting a crime, and they say, well, we have to deal with the Catholics first, and then we might get it around to you. They, they have a state system of education for everybody. If Catholics or anybody else want to add on... Mm. Opt in religion on top of that, that's fine, but the state shouldn't be doing that. And um, what kind of number is he talking about? Because are you aware of how we've moved away from the Roman Catholic Church over the last 10 or 20 or 30 years? Uh, but there's no question that most of the schools near you are going to be Roman Catholic in, in ethos. Um, so how many, you know, what percentage, What? how many? Well, there's about, there's over 3,000 primary schools. Less than 100 are multi-denominational. Yeah. There's no non-denominational. The state is trying to put in place another 200 multi-denominational over a period of maybe 15 years. But even if you get that, that's still less than a tenth of the schools. And what's happening, which is even more sinister, is the Catholic Church is trying to negotiate that if they divest control of a small number of schools, that they have a stronger Catholic ethos in the ones that they retain control of. Now, more than half of the schools in the country are what are called standalone schools, which means they're the only school in the locality. So if you're in that locality, you don't have any choice. Mm. You, you have a choice of only a Catholic school. So if, if this works out, what it will do is it, it would provide some relief for a small number of secular families uh, but make things worse for yeah. most uh, secular families and minority faith families because their only local publicly funded school will have an even stronger Catholic ethos. Um, the, the, when you do put your kids in, if you, I mean, very often it's, it's geography is the deciding factor on where your kids go to school, isn't it? It's, it's the nearest possible schools you can get them into. Um, you don't have much choice. No, no one really does. If you do find your children, and if you are an atheist and your children are in a Roman Catholic school, is it, you know, the end of the world? Are you able to just, you know, have a quiet word with them yourself later and say, you know, we don't really believe in a lot of what they're teaching you? Well, I'll put it to you this way. If there was even one school in Ireland, and we're not looking for this, by the way, but if there was even one school in Ireland, state funded, that actively taught children that there was no God, and that if there was even one set of Catholic parents that by force of circumstance had to send their children to that school that throughout the entire curriculum taught their child that there was no God we'd never hear the end of it until it was resolved people would immediately no, recognise that it's wrong point. you know so, yes. so, so it, the, the same applies the right to freedom of religion and belief applies equally to, to atheists and to other minority faiths as it does to Catholics. Uh, you mentioned uh, the human rights uh, uh, position and that, you know, we're, we're very... Uh, p- people have said, you know, that we, it's incredible that nobody has challenged this. Why is that? Well, one of the difficulties is that if you want to challenge it... Uh, you're challenging it while your child is going through school so they're going, they're going to face further discrimination and the second thing is because the amount of time it takes the child will probably be through the education system by the time it goes through the courts and, and probably end up at the European court which, which is where the Louise O'Keefe mm. case uh, which, which was about sexual abuse but was to do with schools took. Now what, what, the, what that found though which was very significant in the context of the, of the way the state runs the school the state said in that case that it wasn't responsible because it ceded control to, to the, the patron body and she should have been suing the church instead of the state. But what the European Court found is, yeah, fine, okay, you can hand control over to whoever you want to run the schools, but you're still responsible as the state for protecting the human rights of children while they're in those schools. And those human rights stretch beyond sexual abuse. They, they, they stretch to freedom of religion and belief, which includes atheists, the, uh, equality before the law, freedom from discrimination, a whole lot of very fundamental rights that the state is legally obliged to protect uh, under the, the European Court. There are 10 different sets of recommendations by United Nations human rights bodies and Council of Europe human rights bodies over the last few years telling Ireland that it's breaching these human rights. The most recent, just last month, the Council of Europe Commissioner for Human Rights said that he'd never seen anything like it. He, he, and he said that what's happening is that the patron bodies are holding the state hostage. It really has to end. 
And we've heard, though, um, people trying to wrestle control from the patron bodies for a long time. They don't seem to be rel- relinquishing their grip on anything any time soon. No, they don't. They, they don't. And, and it's, it's, be, it's because the, the reason that they're involved is to evangelise. And, and they, they believe that if they don't maintain that, that grip, that, that they are putting their children's faith in peril. But they don't care about the fact that they're putting other children's faith in peril from different perspectives by evangelising them in, into uh, Roman Catholicism. They've been in that position for a very long time, though, haven't they? And you, you know, thought they're not going to let that grip um, slip away anytime soon. So what do you do in the meantime? It seems like you don't have much of a, of a power. You can't really, it seems, get people to change the, the, the legislation. And uh, and the schools bodies aren't going to let, let it go. You know, well, I'm actually quite all. optimistic in, in the medium term. We're living through a world over the last few decades from, from say, the fall of the Berlin Wall yeah. to the, the end of apartheid in, in, in South Africa to, you know, to Brexit, to Donald Trump, to various things. Things that seemed almost impossible a month or two before they happen can happen. And I'm convinced that something will happen that, that will bring about um, the equality in education, religious freedom for everybody, not just Catholics, and, and for, for uh, atheists, for evangelicals, for Ahmadi Muslims, for everybody. We don't know what will trigger it but I think when it does happen it will happen very quickly and this house of cards will fall OK. Um, this does seem, though, I mean, as I say, it is some of the biggest proposed changes to teaching and learning at primary school in absolutely decades. So Yes, and as I said, there, there are people within the NCCA that are trying to do that. They're trying to put in place a, a course about religions and beliefs in an objective, critical and pluralistic manner. And if they do that, that's brilliant. But the difficulty is, in order to have that implemented objectively, they need to change the Education Act in order to stop the schools from implementing the good work that the NCCA is trying to do through a Catholic ethos. Right, and there is pressure on them to change that? Oh, there is. There, there's pressure from, from uh, parents, there's pressure from Atheist Ireland, there's uh, pressure from the United Nations, there's pressure from the Council of Europe, there's pressure from everywhere and, and it, it will eventually Yeah, I have a bit of experience now, the pressure of um, parents, but their minds to things tend to be a very uh, convincing and, uh, you know, threatening kind of group when they want to be. Well, it, it's, a bit, it's about trying to respect everybody's rights equally. And, and, and what's happening now is, is, is that there are parents get, getting, getting a language, a human rights language, rather, rather than just a we want what we want uh, language, a human rights language that, that, that is about ending uh, indoctrination, that's about respecting freedom of religion and belief for everybody, and that's about bringing about an objective, critical and pluralistic delivery of the education system. Great. Michael, thanks very much for that. Pleasure talking to you today. We'll be right back after this.